we think learning a new skill looks something like this. But in reality, it looks something like this. One of the hardest things during this process is knowing what to learn and what not to learn. And that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I would learn if I was starting a day and stick around if you wanna hear the biggest mistakes I made when I was starting out. A lot of people don't understand this, but there are multiple types of developers. It just depends on what you want to build. Do you want to create applications for the web? You become a web developer. Would you prefer to work on mobile applications, learn mobile development, building machine learning models or working on artificial intelligence? Then you have to become a machine learning engineer. But what about building a super robot that checks the weather and makes you chocolate pancakes and hot coffee every time it gets too cold? Oh, then you need to become a... Regardless of what kind of developer you want to become, in my opinion, you only really need to go through the following three stages. Number one, master the basics. Number two, explore or adventure time. And number three, practice. If you think about it, it's kind of like an open world game. In the first few minutes of the game, you go through a tutorial or an intro where they tell you who's the bad guy, who's the hero, and what each button does on your controller. That would be the basic stage. Then you're introduced to the main story where you complete challenges, each harder than the previous, and you unlock new skills as you progress. This is your practice stage. And you're always welcome to deviate from the main story and explore on your own, as long as you remember to go back to the main story. Because, let's face it, you won't be able to complete the game by just doing random side quests. This is the adventure time stage. So first, let's master the basics. The first one is a good programmer's attitude, and a lot of people don't know about it. And the second is the technical skills. A good developer's attitude is understanding that all we really do is solve problems. Some are easy and others will take a long time to figure out. Be patient. Sometimes you can solve them on your own and other times you're going to need help. Become comfortable not knowing the answers to everything. Be coachable and learn to Google like a pro. Yeah, you're expected to Google everything. You're not supposed to memorize things, at least not in the beginning. It will happen naturally over time. The technical skills I'm going to suggest are specifically for web development because that is what I know and what I have the most experience with. Now in the beginning I said I was going to share with you the biggest mistake I made when I was starting out. Here it is. My biggest mistake was trying to learn everything. Every technology, every library, absolutely everything. It only led to frustration and to be honest it was a mess. Specifically in the beginning you should only be focusing on a few things. The basics which are Number one, you need to understand how the web really works. And number two, you need to learn the basic technologies and programming languages of the web. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Git, and hopefully a JavaScript front-end framework. Let me give you a super quick introduction. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Did I get that right? We use it to create the structure of our websites or web applications. All you need to understand is that there are some HTML tags available that will allow you to create elements in your web application. Your browser will read the HTML file and render the page accordingly. Something like, oh, I see here's a title, here's a paragraph. After that, you want to insert the cute picture? Cool. And don't forget the link to your favorite YouTube channel. Awesome. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. And all it is is a set of rules that will tell your browser how your HTML will look. Is your title large? Does your picture have rounded edges? Is your paragraph center and uh, green? Make sure you cover a little bit of Flexbox and CSS grids too. Now, you need to move to JavaScript. It is a programming language that will let you interact with the HTML elements in your web application and some of the features from your browser. By the way, these are the first things I try to learn when I pick up any programming language. How to create variables, what data types are available, what are the most common methods for each data type. Flow control, things like if statements, if else statements, switches. You also need to understand loops how to make your code repeat in action multiple times, how to create a function, that might come in handy. For JavaScript specifically, you want to learn a few more things like how to interact with the DOM, because you can use JavaScript to interact with the HTML elements in your web application, the Fetch API to pull data from external sources, and how to interact with third-party APIs. This will let you create fun and completely useless applications, but that's fine. Take some time to learn a version control software, choose Git. So go ahead and get familiar with that so you can host your code on websites like GitHub. 
it will come in handy to showcase your code to future employers, and it opens up the possibility to easily deploy your app websites and web applications through sites like Netlify. Okay, so what do we know so far? You have a good mindset towards programming and learning. You know how the web works, some HTML, some CSS, the basics of JavaScript, and how to deploy your code. I need to build things, like a lot of things. The practice stage, remember? In fact, you should have been building dummy nonsense projects on every step. You learn HTML, build something with that. CSS, add it to your HTML projects. JavaScript, definitely create a to-do list. Practice, practice, practice. It's okay to watch tutorials, but try to build things on your own. Just you, your code editor, Google, and your rubber duck. You learned about rubber ducking, didn't you? Now let's move on to some more fun and advanced stuff. Let's pick a JavaScript front-end framework. And if I were you, I would choose React. It's in high demand. The React development team is also actively working on it. And the truth is, after you learn one front-end framework, learning others is easy. So this is just the first one you're going to learn. There will be others. Okay, you're done with basics. Great, that's all you need for now. Let's start exploring other things. For example, you already learned the basics of React, but you heard Svelte has a good developer experience. Go and try it. You saw Fireship or Theo's YouTube channel and they released a new video talking about the new framework or tech stack and you're curious? Great, watch the video, learn something, follow along the starter guide in the documentation. This is the time to explore, go and try, learn the basics of other programming languages like Python or Golang. But a word of caution, my friend. It is a slippery slope and if you're not careful, you're going to be wasting a lot of time learning things you might not need. Ever. When you're just starting out, you'll yield the biggest benefit if you dedicate one or two weeks to a new piece of tech and then come back. You just want to learn enough to get a feel for that new framework. Understand what it is about. Go and watch YouTube videos about advanced topics. All you're trying to do is get some exposure to new ideas and take that experience to continue improving your main skills because there are still a lot of things to learn, like Node.js and NPM. What it is, how do you install packages and what do you mean you can create scripts to run your app to run tests and deploy your applications. How do you deploy a node application? Go and take a look at Next.js and start dipping your toes in the full stack developer world. While you're at it, sprinkle your code with some TypeScript and just like before, build things every time you see something new. Finally, practice. I've been saying that you should go and practice a lot, that you should build a lot of things. Let me give you some tips about what kind of things you should be making. You should be building little projects, almost widgets. Doesn't matter if they're not that useful. If you just learn HTML and CSS, create a website about yourself and put it up on the internet. You just finish a tutorial about JavaScript, try to build a to-do list app, a calculator, hangman game, a Wordle clone. Try to learn about APIs, create an app that pulls images from Giphy, for example. They have a web API available for developers. If your goal is to get a job, try to build one or two larger, more complex applications. They need to be super clean and awesome. Try to create a simplified Trello clone, for example. Hopefully, an app with semantic HTML, a good and responsive design that talks to an API or persists data in a database. If you want some simple options for your database solution, check Supabase, Railway, Mongo Atlas, or PlanetScale. Now you know where to start. I hope this video helps you remove some of the initial anxiety and stress that we all have when we first start learning web development. I will be making more videos like this, talking about how to have a successful career in tech so if you enjoyed this video or if you found it useful, please click the like button and consider subscribing. It will mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.